I think we have everybody in here, so we can get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's nice to be meeting uh, while we have some daylight. Uh, my name is Karen Goodfellow. I am the Director of Public Art in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. And in that capacity, I lead the city's public art initiatives and also act as the Director of the Boston Art Commission. Final decisions about public art projects on city property are always made by vote by the board of the Boston Art Commission at public meetings like this one. I'd like to welcome everyone to the February meeting of the Art Commission and we will get started. As background, the Boston Art Commission staffed by the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture is an independent board composed of two ex officio and seven appointed volunteer art and design professionals that holds public meetings to review and vote on matters concerning the city's art collection. Meetings are generally held the second Tuesday of each month to review current public art projects cited on or proposed for city of Boston property. Uh, as you may note, we postponed this month's meeting in our, in our meeting uh, today instead. And thank you for being here. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting virtually to ensure public access to the deliberations of the Boston Art Commission. The public may access this meeting through telephone and video conferencing. I'm joined by Boston Art Commission and Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture staff, uh, Sarah Rodrigo, Public Art Project Manager, and Christina McGeehan, Communications Director, who will be helping to facilitate this meeting. I will now hand it over to Chair Mark Pasnick and, and uh, he will call the meeting to order and go over some further instruction. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the Boston Art Commission meeting for February. I'm calling this public hearing to order at 4.04 p.m. Today, the Boston Art Commission will be holding its monthly public meeting. I'll begin with a roll call of commissioners to confirm we have a quorum. As I, as I state your name, please say here. Um, Camilo Alvarez. Here. Next slide. Equa is not here. Uh, Cara Elliott Ortega. Here. Brian Hone. Here. Michael Canizzo. Here. Lisa Tung. Here. Robert Freeman. Here. John Andres. Here. Uh, so it seems we have a quorum. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, the commission and staff wish to provide some instruction on using this platform effectively to offer questions and comments from the public when the time comes. Um, to explain briefly, um, there are several items that we ask you to, uh, or, or uh, items that we ask you to follow. Uh, as with regular BAC meetings, project partners, members of the public may have an opportunity to provide public testimony on items the commission will vote on. Uh, after presentations and commissioners clarifying questions, the chair uh, may invite public testimony. Please remember to keep your comments on topic and brief, and we'll provide more detailed instruction uh, when we get closer to the time where the public can make comments. We'll be following the publicly posted agenda, which will be on the next slide. Uh, and as you can see, it outlines the agenda for today. Um, this is available publicly um, in case you wish to refer to it. Uh, and the meeting today will begin with the director's report covering a number of topics outlined here. So I'll turn it over. Uh, oh, sorry. First, we have to review the meeting minutes um, from the previous January 12th meeting. Uh, are there any comments or modifications that any commissioners would like to make to the meeting minutes at this time? No, I'm not hearing any comments. Um, I will do the roll call again. Uh, and please, uh, oh, actually we need a motion first. Do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? I move we accept the minutes. Thank you. Seconded. Uh, and seconded by Lisa. Uh, all those in favor, um, Camilo Alvarez. Yes. Cara Elliott Ortega. Yes. Brian Hone. Yes. Michael Canizzo. Yes. Lisa Tung. Yes. Robert Freeman. Yes. John Andres. Yes. 
And I vote yes as well. So the motion passes, uh, the minutes are approved. Um, next up, we'll move to Karen Goodfellow uh, for her director's report. Karen. Thanks, Mark. We'll just start off with some uh, administrative updates. Uh, firstly, uh, to let you all know that the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture is collaborating with two universities this term, um, both MIT and Northeastern University. Uh, we're working with Northeastern University students on a capstone project, evaluating cultural symbols in public spaces and incorporating an equitable and decolonizing approach to policy and processes. Students will be examining collections, policies, processes, and data regarding the existing collection and also looking at our commissioning processes and practices to assist in thinking about creative solutions to communicate um, this content publicly and also to help us think about how we might better do our work. So it's really exciting to be working with them. Um, this group is being advised by Dr. Ted Landmark at Northeastern and at MIT, where we're collaborating um, along with the Mayor's Office of Equity through Dr. Carolyn Crockett and her team on the course, Crowdsource City, Social Media Technology and Planning Processes. Our office um, and CAR has um, started this um, conversation with them and I've met with them and, and will again, um, will be providing them materials and, and meeting with the class and working with students to develop project proposals that address the idea of the monument and excluded voices in the public art landscape. And they're in particular very interested in looking at all the data that we've been starting to gather through Emancipation Group. Um, and they have also been um, interested in meeting with Erin Genia, the uh, artist in residence through the AIR program. Um, to help think about some of the work that she's been doing around monuments. And that class is being led by assistant professor Catherine Vignazio, who is also an artist. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that. No, I think we're just excited to have some additional bandwidth to think about these important topics. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. We'll share back what, what the classes work on. All right, and so we'll review some in process public art. Um, and with that, we have an update uh, from the Rose Kennedy Greenway. The, um, the Greenway has commissioned artist Daniel Gordon to create an exhibition that will span the entire one and a half miles of the Greenway. And it will be on view this summer. The exhibition consists of a sculptural vignette, 20 outdoor photographs, a 70 by 76 mural, and graphic elements applied to park furnishings and infrastructure. Director and Curator for Public Art at the Greenway Conservancy, Lucas Cohen, is in attendance and can answer any questions we have. Um, we will um, have a few images of the work here. So on the upper left is a Daniel Gordon photograph. Daniel's practice involves calling images from the internet, digitally altering them and using them to construct tableaus, which he then photographs, propelled by intuition in Photoshop. Um, Gordon expands the traditional visual repertoire to include the World Wide Web. His ability to integrate digital and analog images creates a joyful disorientation in which fiction and truth are indistinguishable from each other. And on the right is a rendering of the 70 by 76 mural that is proposed for the 2021 installation. It's entitled Summer Still Life with Lobsters and Ferns. And it will be installed between April 28th and May 14th, weather permitting. Um, and this will be the first time that his work will be translated from a photograph into a painting or mural. Next slide. In addition to the mural, the Greenway will also be dis will also um, be displaying a collection of Daniel's photographic works, a selection of which are shown here, along with an example of the mounting structures in the lower left and a map of the Greenway in the lower right. Uh, and this will take place June 6th through 10th. And um, he will also exhibit a sculptural work entitled Blue Poppies, which is shown here. And this will be the first time Daniel's work will be translated from a photograph to a sculptural form, demystifying his process in producing sculptural props, uh, which he photographs within his studio. Um, so I'll pause there in case we have um, any questions for Lucas. Again, this is not something we have to vote on. Um, so we're just sharing this on um, the Greenway is sharing it out of courtesy, as you may remember. The Greenway is not on city property, although it is an important part of the city of Boston. I have one question. How excited are you, Lucas, for this? Uh, I've been working on this exhibition for five years with this artist now. Um, and you know, part of our main curatorial ethos for the Greenway is to work with artists that have never worked in public space before. And um, to take a photographer and to take apart literally the way he creates in a studio and put that on the Greenway and using the Greenway 
as a backdrop um, is really exciting. I think, um, it, you know, it's been a really wonderful um, process uh, over this past year and a half in regards to even just figuring out how to engineer the sculptural work um, as it's an exact replica of his paper props uh, from front to back, um, just enlarged and made with steel. Uh, and it's a dye sublimation print as well too. So we're using, um, working with the artists to use new ways and mediums of actually photographically printing. So this is really a meta, 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 meta exhibition in a lot of ways for this artist. Um, and so we are very excited about it. So um, I always uh, love to be able to come and present to BAC um, and what we're working towards. Um, so I hope, I hope the public enjoys it. Great, thanks. And next up we have Storytelling Sway uh, by Gianna Stewart. This project is a new rotating public art initiative to create an activate and inclusive neighborhood stoop. The location for the rotating public art intervention is One Greenway Park, a state owned green space associated with One Greenway, housing development in the Chinatown neighborhood of Austin. The artist Jana Stewart was selected to create this artwork in 2019. She was chosen as the inaugural artist for the Hudson Street Stoop because of her passion for public art and her desire to enter resident voices. As a, a Boston-based artist, Jana has created the sculpture for, for the 2019 Underwater Museum of Art in the Gulf of Mexico, as well as site-specific temporary works across Massachusetts. In 2020, Jana began a community engagement process, including two community listening sessions facilitated by Cynthia Yee, founder of the Asian American Resource Workshop Writers Group in Boston. Her work has culminated in the design you see here, which will be fabricated and installed this spring with an opening celebration in May. The piece will be deinstalled in the fall of 2022. Gina Ha, Director of Community Programs and Design for the Asian Community Development Corporation. Um, and, and, and the artist, Jen Stewart, uh, may be in attendance to answer any questions. I did a quick look just now to see, and I didn't see them, but I may have missed them. I'm right here. Um, Oh, you are. Hello. Hi. Hi. Is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, no, you did a great recap, Karen. <laughs> um, if folks have any questions, I'm here um, to answer. Great. Thanks, Jen. And is Gianna here? Um, I don't believe she could make it. Okay. Thank you. Any questions on this project? Again, this is state property, so we don't vote on it, but it's a Public project. So thank you so much for, for sharing it with us. Thank you. All right. So we'll move along um, to long term projects. Um, so uh, again, we're, we're trying to give you guys updates on these and everyone else, um, you know, once a month. These are very long projects. Uh, and so we want to make sure we're keeping them in our mind as there's a lot of work going on in the background on these. Um, so by long-term projects, as a reminder, that means projects that will be uh, installed for five years or more. Uh, and this is the first page of our uh, overview of our current city-driven long-term public art commission. We've organized this list to align with um, our art commission reviews and also how we uh, commission our contract payments. Uh, as we talked about last month within web by Matthew Hinsman at the Jamaica Plain DPL Curtis Hall campus is in the process of being installed. Um, and there were delays because of weather. Um, obviously, there are a lot of delays going on this year, but we're very excited that this is moving forward. And on the top right, you can see some images of the site and construction and a prototype of the chairs. In December, you approved the final design um, for the Roxbury Branch Project, one by Joe Wardwell in collaboration with Nakia Hill and the Y Lab writers at 86 Boston. Um, they're fabricating the artwork and targeting a spring 2021 installation. Hyde Square uh, Public Art is in its final design and artists Christina Pereno and Amin Taj are looking forward to bringing their design to review in the coming months. And we are restarting conversations in the, in the community there on those projects. Six projects are now in preliminary design. Monica Bravo will be presenting her preliminary design to you later in this meeting. Uh, we're very excited for that. And both the uh, Boston Art, Art Academy projects are well along in their processes. Uh, both Vine Street projects are in the current process and the team for the DeWitt Playground, Marlon Forster and Studio Luce have begun their work and look forward to presenting in the future. And so we are looking forward to having more artists come in as uh, spring approaches. Two other projects at the Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library are still in contracting phase. 
We hope to have those artists under contract and working on the preliminary designs in March. Additionally, the artist selected for the Ruggles Corridor Integrated Art Project is beginning the contracting process. One project is in artist selection phase, that's the Adams Branch at the Boston Public Library, which we anticipate bringing to you in April. And finally, we'll be releasing several calls in the coming months, a call for City Hall Plaza, the Engagement Center in Newmarket, a gateway commission for the Ruggles Corridor, and a citywide mural call are um, all coming up. So we look forward to bringing those to you soon. And then um, lastly, existing public art. So we'll touch on the Emancipation Group. Um, this is obviously a very familiar project at this point for most of us, but for those who may, may be new to our meetings, the commission voted unanimously to remove the bronze figurative elements of the Emancipation Group from Park Plaza last summer after an extensive public process um, in which we heard from uh, more than people with more than 160 letters and 645 responses to a survey. Um, and in keeping with that commitment, the Emancipation Group was removed and placed in temporary storage on December 29, 2020. Um, the sculpture will remain in storage while we further document the artwork and identify the location for uh, recontextualization. And the sculpture will be con considered a long-term loan when that does happen. Uh, next slide. On this slide, you'll see that we have a uh, um, created um, an opportunity to gather more public input on the future of the Park Plaza site and for the, for the sculpture itself. Um, at this moment, we've received 64 responses. Um, if you are interested, you can go to that uh, link right there, boston.gov slash emancipation group, and you can share your thoughts with us or even design suggestions. And with that, I would love to um, check in with Commissioners Freeman and Alvarez, um, who've been consulting with advisors for the recontextualization of the bronze figurative elements of the Emancipation Group and the site following the removal of the sculpture. They've hosted uh, a number of meetings so far, which have taken place in September, October, January, and February. And I invite um, the commissioners to provide an update if they, if they would like. Thanks, Karen. Um, I, I don't know if um, um, Camilo wants to go first to talk about events but I'd be happy to talk about the recontextualization subcommittee. Um, Go for is it, that okay, the order of things, Camilla? For sure. Okay. Um, uh, we met on February 5th uh, to really go over some of the responses um, to the letters that we sent out on uh, December 14th and January 14th. Now, these letters that were sent, they were sent to museums, educational institutions, and libraries. Um, and we were asking them for really information and advice, but we were also asking them if they had any interest in acquiring the Emancipation Group statue on a long-term loan. Um, I think I may have gone over this before, but I'll quickly read where we sent those letters. We sent the letters to the Atlantic History Project, the Smithsonian Institute, the Abraham Lincoln Museum and Library, uh, the Boston Public Library, the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, uh, Peabody Essex Museum, the Museum of Science, National Trust for Historic Preservation, the Worcester Art Museum, and the Springfield Museum Corporation. Almost all of the responses it, uh, for a long-term loan were negative, with the exception of the Abe Lincoln um, Museum and Library. I spoke with um, Ian Hunt, who is the uh, Director of Acquisitions, and he is extremely enthusiastic about acquiring our uh, uh, Emancipation Group on a long-term loan. He does, however, have board members who are a little reserved, but uh, those, uh, those conversations are ongoing still. Um, to our surprise, we, uh, we received an unsolicited letter from the town of Cottleville, I should say the city of Cottleville, Missouri. Um, Cottleville, Missouri was where Archer Alexander, the slave kneeling under um, President um, Lincoln um, in the statue, uh, he lived the last 30 years of his life in slavery in Cottleville. They have a memorial to uh, Archer Alexander, but it's a very small one and it's insignificant. Um, and they would like to enhance that memorial with the Emancipation Group and with a standing um, statue of Archer Alexander. I asked them if they had any um, people of color on their uh, historical commission. 
I asked them if they um, had spoken with the NAACP or any African American leaders in their community. Um, and I asked them if they would have a standing uh, sculpture of Archer Alexander to accompany um, the uh, kneeling uh, uh, statue that uh, we would give on long-term loan. Um, at that point, he said that he would look into it. He being um, the sheriff of, of uh, Cottleville and also the head of the historic commission. I received a call from him on um, about a week and a half ago uh, with the very enthusiastic news that they had spoken to the uh, African-American leaders and business leaders in the town of Cotterville, city of Cotterville, I call it the town, it is a city, um, that they had um, spoken to the mayor who was also on the Zoom call um, and that they did intend to uh, erect a statue of Archer Alexander um, to go along with the small statue that they have now um, representing him in Cottleville. So they were very enthusiastic about acquiring our statue on a long-term loan. Um, they also said that they would send a proposal to the city of Boston. So we look forward to getting that proposal. Um, I also um, asked about, I asked uh, Karen about um, looking into the, uh, the legal uh, department. No, I know because I worked on the master plan. Oops, I don't know who that was. Um, the uh, looking, uh, thinking about restrictions, uh, are there any restrictions on the long-term loan uh, from legal? We are waiting to hear back from him. On a very, very different note, um, two members of our subcommittee uh, feel that it's a very important to keep the uh, emancipation group in Boston. And they propose that I begin discussions with uh, parks and recreation, Boston Parks and Recreation for sites that they may have for to uh, again place the emancipation group on. I am extremely reluctant to go ahead with this, but I would like uh, input from the commissioners because I may have missed something in my thinking. Um, I'm reluctant because we are taking it out of one public space. Why would we put it into another public space? But I would like to hear from our commissioners um, what they think about this so that I can get back with, um, with our subcommittee members. Um, we, we can either have a discussion now or, or uh, you can email me uh, your thinking. I appreciate it. Maybe a few commissioners would like to weigh in now. You could take a minute or two. I, I do think that we wanted it not outdoors in public land, is that sort of my recollection of it. Um, I mean, if there were a pavilion it was going inside of, or if it was, you know, in an enclosed environment where it could be interpreted fully, that might be a different story. If there were some way to have it, um, you know, our, our, our question was, can it really be interpreted in the public realm in an open place where people come into contact with, to, with it without any frame around it, without any frame of knowledge around it. So I think that's, for me, I, I probably share your concern. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I think the answer is no, that it, it can't be. I think that's, that's what our vote contained anyway. So going in that direction would mean reassessing that. And I don't, um, you're kind of blinking out. Is that Cara? Yeah, am I cutting out? Yeah. I, yeah, we heard most of it, what you said, though. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Cara. Okay, well, that ends my report, then. Thank you very much for the responses. Thank you, Bob. That was, I mean, that, that runs the gist of it. I mean, another aspect of the recontextualization that we were looking into was perhaps putting together a traveling exhibition with the sculpture at its center but i think many of the subcommittee members were wondering if there were any sort of you know budget uh financial uh commitment to some sort of endeavor as such as for the emancipation uh event subcommittee we recently made contact with the city of boston's youth poet program and we're in the process of approaching them to commission uh perhaps poetry for the emancipation group in order to schedule an event. 
which I think we're now at this point, we're looking at towards the spring for the schedule. And that's pretty much it on the Emancipation Group Subcommittee event. Okay, great. Karen, is that the end of your report? Yes, thank okay. you so much. Great, thank you everybody. Um, I know this is a continued set of work for the subcommittees um, and it's great that um, you keep moving the uh, work forward. Uh, we will now move on to items for uh, public review, public testimony and commission vote. Um, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, um, there are instructions for public testimony which Karen Goodfellow will go over briefly now. Um, so, uh, briefly to review the procedure for public comment, um, we ask uh, if you would like to, to comment, the, the chair will, will, will let you know when, it, when it's time for that, and there are a couple ways for us to let you know, and those are generally by raising your hand on the Zoom platform, but if you are calling in, um, you can press star nine, and that should also let us know that you'd like to speak. Um, and if you are on Zoom, you can raise your hand in a few different ways. You can do so by clicking on the participants button and pressing the hand icon next to your name. Um, you can also press the reactions button and choose to raise your hand, or you can click on the chat button and write that you would like to speak and we'll add you to the list. Um, I know everybody's um, screen might look a little bit different, but here you can see some images that should be general guides for you to let you know what you should be looking for. And we will wait for two minutes to gather questions or comments at that moment. And we'll put you in a digital line. And when it's your turn, we'll announce your name and you can unmute yourself. And we ask that you please try to keep your testimony to two minutes. Thank you, Karen. The next slide outlines a few helpful guidelines for public testimony. Um, if you want to offer a verbal testimony, please prepare ahead. Uh, and follow these guidelines. We ask you to speak for no more than two to three minutes. We understand this is a short amount of time. Please feel free to submit longer written testimony to our via email to bac at boston.gov. When you're called on, uh, please state your name, title, program, or organization if it applies. Uh, we recommend that you begin with a clear statement of your position. I, we support the agenda item or not support the agenda item. Um, use factual arguments and data to support your positions and or a personal story or experience to humanize the impact the vote would have. Make sure the topics you wish to testify about is within the purview of the BAC. We ask that you not include pejorative, ableist, or otherwise abusive language. Uh, please be aware that the, because of time constraints, the chair, that's me, may not be able to provide time for multiple testimonies from one committee member, or from, from one community member, sorry. Uh, while you may disagree with other attendees' testimony, you may not interrupt them during their allotted time. This time is reserved for testimony. The commission may not have the time to answer questions. Please send questions to our via email to bac at boston.gov. So we will begin uh, with our first uh, presentation, hearing from John Crowley to speak about the Boston City Hall Elevation Lobby murals. John, do you want to? Take it away. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, as part of um, City Hall's uh, revamping, the, the basically doing a do-over of City Hall. Um, perhaps you see the third floor lobby or uh, the second floor. But as part of this, uh, they asked us to come up with some ideas for murals that are uh, currently installed. Um, there's currently four murals installed on floors uh, nine, eight, seven, and six uh, by the elevators. And um, they are printed murals. Um, and the last round was done by uh, Heidi Shork and the mural crew. And that was kind of an in-house um, art, you know, installation. And uh, we, we figured we'd, uh, update the murals. Um, they were done about four years ago or so. Um, originally, the murals printed there were um, uh, images taken from old prints and paintings in the colonial era. They were printed on foam core. 
and they were really damaged uh, when I was witness to them when I was working um, starting in 2003. Um, and then in 2007, we invited three photographers to submit images to update the murals. And um, these were printed on something more, more, um, you know, damage resistant than foam core. And then the most recent was the mural crew murals. And the idea is to, um, um, you know, in our mission to support artists, um, local artists, we wanted to highlight um, three of our, you know, art stars that we've worked with over the years. And so we came up with eight artists originally, and then we had a um, in office uh, vote and, um, you know, work with property management to come up with these uh, three particular artists. And the first artist is uh, Destiny Palmer. Um, we have a description of her, um, you know, um, you know, her bio and it's all right there. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but um, Destiny's um, really accomplished and I've worked with her since she's about 18 years old. Um, she does a lot for the community and she's a great teacher. And um, oh, in, in all these images, uh, they're not necessarily the, the murals that will be put up. These were just examples. Um, so we're gonna work with the artists and um, you know, come up with an image that's uh, approved by us and them. Um, and a lot will be, depend on you know, what kind of resolution they can get from their images and, and items like that. So Destiny is the first artist we chose. And then um, Aqua, who's on the commission, um, who's not here today, um, was our second choice. Uh, worked with Aqua over the years on many things, including um, exhibitions. And uh, she was always in the arts festival and a uh, great community asset. Um, and the third artist is uh, Maya. And she's um, relatively new to me. I, I haven't worked with Maya, but she, she was uh, you know, involved in our uh, public art programs and such. Um, she, she is really a great uh, animation artist and this is one of her still collages. And uh, I'm really hoping we can use this one. Um, so the artist, um, the cost of each uh, mural is about $4,000 to get it printed and installed. And the artist will receive a small stipend also after your approval. And um, I guess the final approval will, uh, you know, depend on what image the artist wants to use and we all agree on. Great, okay, well, thank you, John, uh, for yeah. that presentation and three great works of art. Um, we now uh, will open it up to questions from commissioners uh, before we'll eventually open it up to comments from the community. Do any commissioners have any comments or questions for John? I have a question. So John, the ninth floor is not included um, in the uh, mural program? Yes, the ninth, it'll be the ninth floor, the eighth floor and the seventh floor. The sixth floor, they're gonna keep the present mural that's up there now okay. or make changes to it. And then have you assigned an artist to a particular floor? No, no, we haven't done that. And, uh, what, what process? Well, for those, I work in City Hall, so <laughs> I guess I have a vested interest in, um, um, especially on the ninth floor. Um, so I was just curious how you would assign a particular artist to a, a, a floor. Um, I haven't really thought that through other than, you know, working with the departments possibly, but um, um, yeah, I don't really have an answer for that. Um, I, I usually, you know, when I, when I do things like that, I, you know, I was generally, generally charged to make the decision and I usually base it on, 
you know, if it is the BPDA, it would be something architectural or, you know, so on and so forth, or our floor would be something really arty. Um, but um, yeah, that's a question I need to answer. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. Chris, I have a personal favorite for <laughs> the ninth floor. <laughs> but I don't know if it's appropriate to say, but yeah, no, I think, yeah, I was just curious. I think we'll file that under the department engagement. We'll reach back out to you. Okay. <laughs> Mark, I, I have a question. Um, you know, I think ECHO is, is one of the stronger murals and I'd look forward to seeing it in, in City Hall, but is, is there a conflict of interest um, by having her sit on, on the commission that vote? I think that's a good question. And perhaps in our vote, we could, I was thinking that maybe we should just you know, if we vote to approve all three, we should have the proviso that we check with legal about any conflict of interest if, if there is one. Thanks, Mark. Uh, any other questions from commissioners? Actually, Mark, couldn't she just recuse herself? I, I think there's some complications I know with doing work for our department. Um, so I think we should just ask legal to advise on it. Uh, that's my feeling at least. I hope there won't be a problem, but we should, you know, go through the correct process. Because I agree, it's a great, it's a great piece. All three, I'm, I'm really excited about. I'll, I'll be glad to see them in the elevator lobbies. Uh, any other comments from commissioners? Okay, we can open up to any public comments. Um, we should go to the next slide, just so if anybody does want to make a comment, they know how to log in. We'll, we'll make just, wait just a minute and see if there's any comments from the public. Karen, are you monitoring this or Sarah? Yeah, so um, Christina and Sarah are monitoring requests. We've had requests, but not for this subject matter yet, I believe. Okay. We'll just give it a minute more. Okay, not seeing any public comments, we'll move to uh, a motion. And I think um, if somebody would like to make a motion, perhaps we can just include the conflict of interest question in the motion. Lisa, would you be a, would you volunteer? You look like you're- uh, Sure, um, I move that we um, go ahead and accept these proposals, provided that there's no conflict after we check with legal. Great. I second uh, that. Thank you, Camilo. So I will go through the roll call again. And um, oh, everybody is here. OK, so I'll ask for your vote on that motion. Camilo Alvarez? Yes. Michael? Yes. Tara? Yes. John? Yes. Brian? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Robert? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So the motion passes. Uh, congratulations to the three artists. That's exciting news. Um, I assume we will see it at one last step uh, in the process, but thank you, John, for the work on the selection process. You're welcome. Okay, so next up we have the East Boston Police Station uh, Public Art, uh, and we can welcome Monica Bravo, Bravo to our session. Monica, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Great. Hi. Welcome. I think Sarah will, will kick us, us off at the moment, though, right? Sarah? Yes. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you, um, Chair Pasnick. So this commission is for the new District A7 police station in East Boston, located on East Eagle Street. Um, among other advantages to this new facility, um, are a publicly accessible lobby and a large community room that will provide a much needed public meeting location for the East Boston community. And that is what Monica has been focused on. Um, we have project partners, some of which are here tonight. Uh, we have partners in the facilities department, the Boston Police Department, the Office of Neighborhood Services, and the architects for the project. Um, and I apologize in advance if I butchered their name, Lears Weinzepfel Architects, um, as well as other designers and contractors on this project. Um, so the artist commissioned is Monica Bravo, who is here. 
tonight to present to you. Uh, Monica is a multidisciplinary artist who currently resides in Miami Beach. Uh, she's very lucky. And her work integrates a wide array of disciplines from psychotechnologies to immersive sculptural environments. And you can see she has quite an impressive resume. Um, for the past few months, I've had the pleasure of working with Monica and our other project partners um, on this, this exciting new public artwork. She's here tonight and she's going to be presenting her preliminary design to you. Monica, welcome. Thank I'm you. gonna hand it over to you now. Thank you so much. So we get the first slide then. Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay, so hello everybody. Thank you for having me here. I'm super excited with this project. Um, I'm very inspired by a lot of stuff in East Boston. One of them being the topography. <laughs> this is a place where I always start looking at stuff um, and getting inspiration. So I noticed, um, you know, there's a, a lot of things going on in this area. And one of them was the original uh, area was composed of five islands. And then we had the landfill. And then we also had uh, the construction of the park and the destruction of the park. And then we had the um, construction of or the expansion of the airports. So all these things have been sort of informing a little bit or very much of the topography, but as well as the people that are is a place that has a lot of immigration. So I'm very interested in um, how to represent all these uh, notions in, in a way that they can be um, visible in the in the project throughout uh, the forms and the shapes. So Sarah, you can move to the next slide. Thank you. So when I, because I was very much inspired on the origin, origin and the topography, um, I was playing a little bit I like how I wanted to do the mosaic. So I, I was looking back at my files for the piece that I did for the uh, subway, uh, subway, yes, in, in Brooklyn. And I remember how when they ship the pieces, they ship it all in little pieces like that. In, in, so they put it together and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great to do it the, the, the contrary, just separate everything. So that's how I got the idea of like making all the pieces separate. So here you have, I mean, all the designs right now are like, um, um, here I'm, I'm presenting not so much the final design, but um, like how it is going to have a feel. This is like a sensation of how everything's going to be. So um, I, um, let me see. So I have the the islands, they're not positioned here the way I want to put them because I want to scatter them in the two different um, rooms. One for the community room on the wall and the other one for the main entrance. And they're going to be arranged also with the uh, mobiles that I'm going to talk about. So we can move to the next uh, slide, please. The one before, the one, next one, no. <laughs> that one. So here you can see a little bit, there's a lot of color. I love to use color because color, um, and especially when I use like very bright and very contrasty colors, I always speak about a little bit like the difference in things. And, and here in this in this space, um, it's very important to understand there's um, the community uh, at this point needs to be integrated. And that's one of the things that I wanna do with this project is really, um, I created the workshop at the same time and both of them are working together. The, the workshop has informed the, the piece and the piece is informing the workshop. So I'm going to use a lot the idea of perspective and equilibrium as a materiality and, and kind of uh, inspire the people that get to the room, to the place to be inspired to and, and question a little bit what is it that they're looking at so you can see maps you can see vintage maps you, you're going to see certain landmarks uh, that i'm going to take from the historical society from east boston i'm very interested in seeing like how much the, again like how much this place was shaped by throughout history we can move to i'm going to show you a couple of like a bunch of the images that i'm working on so this is another uh, thing, um, another <laughs> image, uh, you can see a lot of abstraction and, and these abstract forms are going to be making a, a reference also to the mobiles, uh, which I'm going to talk a little bit later. We can move to the next one. Oh, here. Okay. So here um, we have, um, I've been playing a little bit with the shapes and I'm still working together with the people in Germany to see exactly how the shape is going to be. If it, is it going to be more difficult to make it really round or is it going to be better to do it a little bit more um, like um, you know, the, the cuts to be more uh, right angle shapes because I also want to be sure that I'm going to use the resources in the best possible of ways not to use you know sometimes where you want to make like a very round thing that could cost much more money so I'm right now we're working together with an engineer um, and a designer to see what is uh, because of making a mosaic that is just 
square is much easier than making this. So that's the process where I am right now. We can move to the next one. Okay, so the interesting thing about the mosaic is I can print on the ceramic and I can use old maps and I can have a lot of information that is very, very detailed, even though they're gonna be up you know, above like eight feet, one can see a lot of the information. You can see here on the sides, there's some information from the previous uh, um, mosaic that I did. So I want to use um, images that are big enough for the, 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 um, the people that are underneath can recognize themselves and they can relate to the place because I want always to create like a sense of presence for the for the viewers so they recognize that they're part of the landscape that they're part of the building that, that I'm talking about their topography their history the layers of information that they're around another thing that I'm very uh, motivated in the area is the, and I think I spoke about this before in, in other meetings is like um, the name of the of the um, of the street where this is going to be is called Condor and then the the neighborhood is called Eagle Hill. So these are two animals that for me are very important because they also represent the idea of like the kind of wide vision that you can have in order to see things when you want to have a perspective and also like a very narrow when the, when the condor or the eagle want to get a prey, uh, they just really focus on it. So I'm gonna use this as a basis of, of inspiration also for the way you can see this, this piece because you can steer from very far away but also you can go and, and see the details. We can go to the next one. Sarah, please. Yeah. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm start putting a little bit like the arrangements that I want to place um, on the walls. I'm going to um, uh, have the mosaics uh, being scattered around, and then um, I'm gonna have um, I don't know how to say the word cantilever that are gonna come out. The 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 mobiles are gonna be coming out at least six inches from the from the wall. And I want to have a play with that. Um, the you start seeing here the mobiles. They have they're made out of words, but the words are very abstract. And I'm going to talk about it in the next slide uh, when we can move to the next one. I'm, I'm still going to show you images of color. I'm going to use a lot of color, a lot of information from the site, a lot of images that are local. Um, from the maps and pictures. I've been downloading a lot of images. I wish I could have gone to Boston to take pictures, but you know, COVID has not allowed me to really do that, but I'm having a lot of fun just downloading a lot of the um, files from the historical society. So mm -hmm. uh, we can go to the next one. Okay, so this one is uh, very important because here I'm gonna talk about uh, what the mobiles are about, which is also part of the, the whole concept of the piece is based on the idea of perspective and how at this point, uh, and also the name of the piece, it's, it's uh, making a reference to Carl Jung, the psychologist, um, because I, uh, one of his um, techniques that he has uh, provided to the world is called shadow work. So I'm very much into, into Jungian psychology because I think that if we use the other and the surface of the other person in order to see uh, what we don't like or we like from the other person, we can actually find something that emerges and that thing that emerges is something that probably we can integrate. So this is gonna be part of the workshop. The workshop is going to have the integration of ideas so we can create dialogue. So in, in using certain words, uh, and I'm gonna use words that are very meaningful, like courage, um, valor, um, let me see what else I have the, the, the list of the words somewhere here. So I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, enjoy, communion, contribute, uh, vocation. I'm going to define a lot of words that are probably if we get to the root of the words, we can understand the meaning of them. And they are going to be uh, making part of the mobile. So here I, I just uh, show you a little bit of uh, the kind of font case I'm going to use on the top of the, of the image. You see uh, the font case that it was created by the um, artist called Joseph Albers. Uh, he was a uh, German and he was part of the ba Bauhaus and then he ended up coming to America and he created this uh, font case that it was making letters or the, or the how do you call the forms of the, of the, um, yeah, of the letters were coming from abstraction of just geometrical um, shapes. So I used this in another work before um, for the Venice Bien Biennial for the Vatican Pavilion. So I'm making a reference to my other work. We can go to the next one, Sarah. Okay, so here you can see a little bit how it's going to look. This is a, they're going to be, um, I don't know exactly how many, but at least five, uh, 
five to seven, that's my number that I'm, I'm, I'm calculating right now. I'm doing numbers uh, and we're figuring a lot of stuff, how we're going to hang them from the ceiling and all that. So they're gonna be uh, just portraying these words. You know, The one on the left says courage, the other one say dialogos. You cannot really read them, but the interesting thing about this is like, if you know that they're made out of words and you start really looking at them uh, from a different perspective. And that's what I want. I want people to really understand that we can change our way of thinking if we just move a little bit around, if we just don't stay in the same place all the time. So this is a this is a work that I wanna do and I wanna place in, in a way that it is very uh, playful. So you can see from one room and the other, you can always find a different way depending on the light, depending on you're standing at, at, and you're gonna discover something else every time, all the time. We can go to the next one. Yes. Here, so I just got some samples the other day with a glass uh, in Germany. So we're making sure that we can have the right cut because they have like very specific shapes. So we're working on that, on the samples. And, and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, we're gonna start working on the texture you know, as soon as I get approved because I wanna give a very specific texture to the glass. So it's gonna be see-through, but it's also gonna have something, something a little bit like uh, fabric. I want to use the idea of like a texture with fabric that is not so see-through, but you can see some sort of texture I'm working on that. Let's go to the next. So here is just the mock-up. I mean, I don't have anything final there because I'm waiting for numbers again. Um, I, I'm pretty close with the budget that I have right now, like with the numbers, but I'm just, we're very fine with engineer and there's a lot at stake, so I have to coordinate everything. Um, so you see, I'm gonna have some things on the wall. I'm gonna have other things hanging, but the whole idea is to have like a playful environment full of color, full of uh, curiosity. So if you ever go to the building or you work there, you will always find something new to discover. And that for me is very important. That's also part of the workshop. We can go to the workshop now, Sarah. All right, so the workshop um, we're gonna do in uh, March, uh, I believe, yeah, mid-March, and it's called um, Enjoy, I See You and Me in a New Perspective, and I'm very, very interested in working together with the community, both with the police department, their families, and the people who are, live um, and inhabit uh, the you know the surroundings uh, It's gonna made, uh, be made from the childlike perspective. I think that it's very important also to to see that you know, children always have a sense of curiosity and they have a sense of innocence that we so much need right now in order to see things very different. Um, and I'm gonna use animation. I'm gonna, I have created all these characters that they, they represent the community, a very large uh, amount of immigrant immigration in, in the community. So I'm very interested in that and seeing how uh, through, um, through etymology and going to the root of the words, uh, we can also recenter ourselves. I'm going to do, it's going to be very hands on, and I'm going to uh, teach some um, technologies that are related to Jungian psychology, but also somatic uh, work. So it's referring to how we feel, it's very, it's very much about how feel, we feel stuff. Because I think that at this moment, that all our emotions are very. Um, like on the brink of breaking, we need to go back to the body, we need to go back to the root and then recenter. So I, the, the workshop is it's very important for me. So I don't know if anybody has any questions and I can go back to the design. Uh, Sarah, do we wanna open it up to any project partners first or commissioner questions first? I, I think that's up to you. Uh, we do have a couple of our project partners. Mm -hmm. I well, believe here. See if any project partners have anything that they want to add into the mix before the commissioners um, address any questions. Yes, I, I see that. Josiah here, for yep. instance. Josiah's here yeah. and Jim. I just like to say that um, I was really excited when Monica was chosen, and every time we met with her and watching the evolution of the of the work has just really been. Uh, fun to participate in. And I think this is really exciting for the area for East Boston. It's inside, but the lobby is very glazed. So you can see it from up the hill and from the ball field and everything. I think it'll be very much a public piece of art that will not be just when you enter the building. So that's really nice. The other thing is it's in a place that's between the public and, you know, the private police activity, like the administration and the cells and things like that. And given the fact that it's such a charged national environment between the police and the communities, um, I think this is 
this is an important, important location. And then finally, her work is beautiful. It's glass and there'll, there'll be a lot of light. And um, I think everyone will, it'll be very beautiful. Thank you, Saya. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a pleasure to work with you guys. I'm very excited with the building as well. Are there any other project partners who want to say anything? No, OK. Um, then commissioners, if there's any questions from you, I just did want to ask one question to start us off, which is it's it's all indoors, but are these doors that go to the outside? So will will the things move because of movement of air in the space or um, what's what's the intention in terms of its uh, mobile like character? This is a very good question. Actually, we've been developing um, with an, a special engineer that uh, he's designing uh, a plate with some rods. So the glass, the weight, everything is done in a way with the distance. So nothing will move. I mean, unless the world goes upside down, but you know, it's mm -hmm. not gonna move. And because it's not gonna move, they're just really still, they're not supposed to be waving like this. On the contrary, I want them to be really fixed. So okay. we're gonna use rods um, and they're gonna be power coded. I mean, the rods and the, and the plate are gonna be part of the piece itself. So whatever you're gonna see vis like visible, from the mobiles are part of the work. Okay, great. And I just love the graphic quality and the playfulness and the color. It's it's pretty amazing. Oh, thank you so much. And there, are, you know, another idea is to have them, you know, coming out of the of the wall as well because when things are salient, people see them. So that's another part of the concept. Is like when things are coming out, we should always look at it from different perspectives to see if we see difference. So I'm I'm, I'm making I'm exaggerating everything a little bit with color, with shape, with the ideas because I think is a is a, the best place to do it. <laughs> Okay, so other commissioners' questions or comments? I was just going to add, I, I think that this is fascinating. I really think this would be a great piece. One thing would, would I would have found a little more helpful is a floor plan or something to begin to understand where these are being placed and in the relationship to the street or to the park, as someone had mentioned. Um, but I think this is fantastic. I, I, I'm looking forward to when it gets installed. But maybe if we could see a, a floor plan or something so we can understand how this fits into the building and in the overall context of the neighborhood. That's great. And this is preliminary review, right, Karen? So we will have to yeah. review again. And, and um, that, that, that's really on us. And so we'll make sure to include that um, next time. Thank you, Michael. That's a really good point for people. But um, so, so that question is so, it's going to be, we need to provide some images from the outside. Is that, I didn't get really if that was directing to me. No, no I think uh, what I was just wondering if there was a floor plan of the, of the police station. So we understand, you know, where the front door is, is it on uh, East Eagle or, you know, so, and then just get a sense of what is visible or what would be visible from the exterior. I see. Um, I can try and help and, and I'm not sure if Josiah might even be the better person, but. I'd love to um, draw, but I don't have that option. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. But we have windows uh, all around. So it's gonna be visible from whichever of the three places. Yeah, so the, the, the left drawing you see is essentially the door from the outside, the vestibule from the outside. And at your back is East Eagle Street. To the left is Con Con Condor Street and the room, this is the lobby, and then the next room that you see through the double height glass wall is the public um, community room. And it's looking at the river, correct? It's looking at the river, but I heard that the Eversource plant today was approved, which is... <laughs> <laughs> block <of> you. Which... <laughs> Unfortunate. For how long? 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think that it's important for at least my vote today, but I think in the future it'd be if, when you come back just to have a plan so we can put this all in, in perspective. But I think that was helpful to sort of be able to get me a little bit more orientated. Yeah, I wonder if there's a plan for, um, or an approach to interpretation and what sort of interpretive content would be provided to the public about the artwork if there's a, some sort of information that'll be provided about the artist and that sort of thing. So that might be good to 
outline for our next discussion too. Yeah, we'll have like all the final uh, placement of things uh, for the next time because I'm still we're still going through uh, some details that I need to define uh, before I just position everything finally, both on the ceiling or on the wall. Great. Other comments from commissioners? I just had a question about um, materials, Monica, and thank you for your presentation. And I know you mentioned um, kind of utilization of glass and also maybe some printed ceramic, if I heard correct, correctly, if you could just kind of talk us through your kind of material pieces. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, can you go back to the slide where oh, we can see the mosaic and the, I think it's the number, uh, that one, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna work with the incredible studio in Germany. I worked with them before, they're called Meyer from Munich and they've been doing glass since uh, 170 years ago. So they basically have provided glass to all the Catholic churches in the United, not in the United States, uh, in Europe. And, but they work a lot here in the United States. Um, but they also do a uh, mosaic and they work with smalti that comes from Venice. And, all, and then in the past, we also use some smalti coming from Mexico. So Mexican smalti has like more shades and is, is less regular. So I like the idea of combining the two kinds of, of, uh, of materials. Uh, we use little tessera, which is like little pieces of glasses that they have four sides where you can see they're all made out of glass. And, and these are used for very small detail, but then they also use these other pieces, as you see there, the yellow one, they're called pizzas because they're like flat pieces. And on those flat pieces, we can make different shapes uh, sometimes just to create some sort of form uh, that will allude to, to the, you know, to my image. And on those ones, you can print. They use a specific kind of printer that then they put with very, very high temperature. So it stays forever. Uh, well, forever as forever, uh, but yeah, it's it's long duration, and um, and uh, with the combination of that, I don't know if you can see a little bit the slide on the on the left. You can have different like a little bit of the of the small pieces, small pieces. Then you have the pizzas uh, alone, and then also other parts that are printed. So what you see at the very end is a combination of all these three techniques. But I want them to be seamless. I've done this before with them, and it's amazing what you get. This time, what I'm going to do, not only that, but I decided to do the shapes because I like to make my life difficult. So I'm, I'm making something added to, to it. And, I'm, and so, but that's where we're defining right now. How much can it be too round or, can, or does it have to be like a straight cut? That's where I am right now with them. Great, thank you. And for the mobile, it's going to be glass. So the glass is floating glass and we're going to also be painting the glass inside. And, and adding some texture. Is the glass gonna be between two, uh, two glasses? I think it's uh, five millimeters each. I will have to check that. And then it's going to be laminated on, in, the, in the middle. So for protection, um, like, like, like if it was tempered. I mean, everything, all the materials are like, especially the glass, they have to be very specialized so because they're gonna be suspended. Yeah. Hey, any other questions from? Commissioners, before we move to public comment. Hearing none, we'll move to the public comment. So we'll open it up for any comments from the public, um, any public testimony. Um, you can see the information here on how to do that. We'll give it a minute or two to see if there's anyone who's getting in line. Uh, Christina and Sarah, you're, you're keeping an eye on the line. Yeah, I don't see anyone um either. Um, Sarah and Christina, let me know if I've missed someone, but it doesn't look like anyone has raised their hand yet, but maybe you can just give them one minute. Um, I do have someone in the chat. Um, Vi would like to make a comment. Okay. V, Vi, I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure. Um, I'll ask you to unmute. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so my name's V. I just wanted to say that I'm very enthusiastic about this project. I think it sounds great. I also like the Jungian perspective because we all are spiritual beings having a human experience. So connecting that piece of like, we're all a part of this 
one community and taking away the barriers of like race, class, and other things that separate us and bring us together is something I'm really excited about. So that's all I really wanted to say. Oh, V, thank you so much. You got the project without me saying a word. <laughs> thank you. No thank you, V, and I hope you'll participate in the open processes that, that uh, Monica's talking about. Yeah, okay. we'd love to invite the community to, to come for the workshop. It's for children and, and non-children, like adults. Okay, um, definitely. Yeah, I, I, I would like to, to do that because I would like to meet some of the people who are going to be, you know, having the work uh, around them. So well, very, very important. But you just said exactly uh, um, what the work is for is integration. It's uh, acceptance is um, seeing things not from the perspective of division, but the contrary, like we're different, but we can be together uh, in one world, which is the meaning of the title, Unos Mundos. Thank you. Okay, Sarah, any other public comments? I am not seeing any. Okay. Um, I would like to note, and this is for V as well, that early in the meeting, Christina put contact information um, for myself, for Director Goodfellow, um, for Christina, for Tricia into the chat. Um, and I'd like to invite V to send me an email so that I can get in touch with you um, about the workshops, which will be taking place the weekend of March 12th, uh, 13th and 14th. Uh, can you just say your email again? Just so sure, it's sarah.rodrigo at boston.gov. And I don't know if I have the ability to send. Christina just posted again okay, in the chat, great. if you can see it. Perfect, yeah. Some people who sign in late might not see it. So that's oh, great. All right. And uh, I'll, so I'll just add that if anybody um, wants to contact us, they can always just write to BAC at boston.gov mm -hmm. as well, which is um, easy to remember, but. So great, Monica, hopefully you'll have a great turnout in your, um, your engagement okay. workshop. Uh, so now we'll move on to the last phase, which is to have the commissioners discuss a motion. Um, again, rem remember this is a preliminary approval we're looking for at this stage. Um, so is there anybody would like to make a motion? I'll make my first motion. Great, Brian. I'd like to make a motion to move forward with the uh, uh, preliminary design review of Monica Bravo's piece presented before the Boston Art Commission today. And I think we could say preliminary design approval, right, Karen? Is that the language we want? Sure, so we can move forward with uh, preliminary design approval. Yes. Is that fine, Brian? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. And a second? I second that. Thank you, Camilo. So let me go through the names again. Uh, Camilo? Yes. Michael? Yes. Cara? Yes. John? Yes. Brian? Yes. Lisa? Yes. And Robert? Yes. Uh, and I also vote yes, so we have a unanimous uh, uh, approval. Uh, the motion passes. Thank you very much, everybody, and congratulations, Monica. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay, our next item of business is to discuss Sudden Presence by Beverly Pepper. Um, uh, the relocation of this artwork uh, currently proposed by HYM Investments. Uh, here to give background for the potential relocation of the sculpture. Um, and uh, in order to provide the commission with a little bit more context, Karen will be uh, uh, providing us with some information. Hi everybody. Um, so uh, we had a conversation about this piece at one of our previous meetings and it was requested that we come back with a little bit more information about the artist and the sculpt sculpture and so Trisha Gilrain, the art collections manager who is not with us today, um, did do that. So I'm going to share what we, um, the information that we have to, uh, for you today. Um, so I'd like to start with some information regarding Beverly Pepper. She passed away recently in 2020, and she was 97 years old. Pepper was a renowned American sculptor, gaining popularity in the 1960s for her large iron, steel, earth, and stone sculptures, frequently displayed outdoors, many in public spaces around the world. She originally began her career as a painter, but mid-career began apprenticing in metal foundries, fabricating large metal sculptures that, according to the New York 
a New York Times obituary, seem to rise organically from the earth, combining industrial elements with natural elements like pressed earth and stone. In describing her work, Pepper spoke of the essential attempt to have cont continuity between the work and the environment. Uh, she was one of the first artists to work with Corten Steel, which develops a sepia patina uh, that resembles rust at a time when women artists were not typically working with these types of materials and techniques. If we go to the next slide. Um, Pepper was born in Brooklyn and attended Pratt Institute before moving to Paris in the 1950s to study cooking and make a living as a painter, inspired by travels to Cambodia in the 1960s and, vis and visiting Angkor Wat, she pivoted from painting hoping to create sculpture influenced by the architecture she saw and how it was in conversation with surrounding natural elements and the passage of time. She began an apprenticeship in an Italian metal foundry to learn welding and by the 1970s, she had become incredibly prolific working in her large studio in Umbria as well as studio spaces in Newark and Philadelphia. On the slide, you'll see her work from the 1970s. On the left, the Todi Columns in Todi, Italy, and Sudden Presence, located in the West End neighborhood in Boston, both exemplify her large-scale complex steel artwork incorporated into the public city landscape. The city of Boston does not have a large percentage of public art by female artists. We have started the process of examining these numbers. On this slide, we've included some very early stats from the, these data sets. It's again, very early in our process. And although we have preliminary numbers uh, to share, we have not uh, done the more in-depth and nuanced analysis of the existing collection, which will be an ongoing process over the coming months. Our early findings are that the collection is 76% male um, and only 11% female. And we certainly have um, some unknown um, and some teams in there as well. Uh, for the works with a named artist, if the artist has multiple works in the collection, they are counted multiple times. And you'll also see on the slide an image of Fern Cunningham Terry with her sculpture, The Sentinel. Fern Cunningham Terry was a prolific female artist that we also lost uh, in the last year who has contributed greatly to the Boston public art landscape. And despite these examples, our preliminary findings show that um, we have, again, really low percentages of female artists made works, and it's the intent of the BAC staff to examine our commissioning processes and work with more female artists through our programs within the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. Um, I know um, Trish is not able to be here with us today, as, as I said, but um, our colleague, Jess Conley, who's been working with her on that process, who's acting as our data coordinator, is here, and I expect that we'll have them both back here to present on the, their findings soon. And with that, I will hand it back to um, Chair, Chair Pasnick. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, for that background information. I'll now open it up to John uh, Hurley of HYM Investments uh, to make an update on um, uh, what their request is and what uh, their plans are currently. John? Thank you, uh, Chair Pasnick, if, if I could. And, and thanks, Dr. Goodfellow, Karen. I really appreciate the sort of intro there. Um, can I ask before I launch in here, can everyone hear me okay? I don't know that I had my audio tested before. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, yes we can hear I'm you. Like, yeah. I'm, thank you, I've got some thumbs up there, that's great. So so again, um, uh, my name is John Hurley. I'm with the HYM Investment Group. And you know, as cited uh, earlier in Karen's remarks, um, you know, we appeared uh, before the commission uh, last month in January uh, of 2021 and um, you know, and, and really to seek guidance on sort of uh, our next steps with uh, to Beverly Pepper's sudden presence. Um, you know, our team, our HYM team, we are sort of leading the efforts to, you know, currently to take on another big civic engagement right now, which is the, the demolition or deconstruction of what many of you guys know is the government center garage. Uh, we are, we've, we've begun that process and, you know, over the next, um, 30 days of that site will continue to see a lot more of that sort of deconstruction of that of that existing garage, that demolition of the garage. And, and, and today where, um, where Ms. Pepper's sculpture sits, uh, which is, by the way, on, on, on private land, uh, it, uh, that's sort of ground zero for where pieces of uh, concrete from the existing garage will be sort of dropped down sort of bro further broken down and, and sort of trucked off, and trucked off site. And with that in mind, you know, our hope at HYM is that we can, you know, we were trying to figure out the best solution to do two things. One, identify and uh, confirm uh, an appropriate uh, temporary relocation um, 
um, scenario for uh, Ms. Pepper's sudden presence. And then, you know, and, and more importantly, you know, uh, find a permanent home uh, in the West End, uh, to be clear, um, for it. And I have a, a few updates that I'd like to sort of speak to on that topic. Um, and I'll get to those in sort of a moment, in addition to a few other updates. But ultimately, sort of our ask here is is for the sort of, uh, you know, I'm choosing my words carefully here. I think it's for the, sort of the ascent, because given sort of right now, I think there's some ownership questions about that. We did do some additional research on that. You know, today, as I mentioned, it does sort of live on uh, public, I'm sorry, on private land. And, you know, with the way this garage, the existing garage is sort of built uh, as sort of a public, uh, you know, by a public entity. It was ultimately sold to, you know, private parties. And, you know, the public, the piece of art um, was commissioned in 1971. And then, you know, from our position, we think that, it, you know, not only the garage, but the land and all of its contents, including Ms. Pepper's sculpture was, was, was conveyed as well. Although what's become clear, I think, from our research and I think from arts and cultures resource within the city of Boston is that it, it's not totally clear, but from our perspective at HYM, we want to be, you know, um, you know, helpful here and we want to, we're committed to, you know, you know, having yeah. this piece of art, which was done. Um, I'm sorry. Did, Turning it into a sloth. I keep going. Why does it smell terrible? I think oh, we need to I mute someone. Sorry, sorry about that, John. We'll try maybe to. Maybe someone should turn oh, on. No. No problem. I'll continue. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So, you know, we're committed to, you know, we understand and, and that this was sort of done. It was done to, you know, to be part of sort of the West End. You know, it's, it's got triangles to it. So it's got sort of a component to sort of the Bolton triangle to it. So we, we'd we like to work with the community. And in a moment, I'll, I'm gonna, I'd like to introduce or call out uh, Dwayne from the from the West End Museum, who I think is is here. And perhaps he has some remarks that he'd like to share with us. But you know, we'd like to work together to, to find that. And I have a couple of updates on that score as well, but, but ultimately our, you know, our ask is, is of, the, of the commission to sort of assent to, you know, allow us to, you know, move the sculpture to allow us to continue to work and explore sort of a permanent home, uh, ideally, right, again, in the, in the West End, you know, and, and by the way, sort of the temporary relocation and permanent one is, is something that we'd be happy to, you know, bear the sole cost and expense for, for all that. And um, and then figure out with the help of kind of folks on this call, you know, the right way to make sure that we're thinking about, um, you know, how how we stay, you know, in touch on this, how we do it the right way, et cetera. So those are sort of my opening remarks. And, and sort of with that, I, I'd like to maybe just dive in on, on just a couple of follow up items, which were. Um, which were, you know, I think asked in the last uh, in the last public hearing. But before I do that, I don't know if I'm, I'm following the right protocol, but I'd like to just pause there just to see if there was any questions on sort of my opening setting of the table. Or, or happy to take that, or, or if you want, I can just continue. Chair, Chair Pasnick, I sort of defer to you. If that's okay. I think you can continue, and then questions might come up at the end. Okay, terrific. Okay, so um, a couple of items. One, again, as I mentioned, Dwayne Lucia, who I, I believe is on the line, he's, he's the exec, executive director of the West End Museum. Dwayne and I, together with other members of our team, we, we, we shared some emails back and forth. I've been in touch with Dwayne a few different times about, you know, Ms. Pepper's uh, sculpture and, you know, and we had really, I think they were good conversations. Again, I, I hope that Dwayne will, will speak and speak his own mind. I don't want to put, you know, words in, but I, I was really pleased with the conversations that we had. I really enjoyed them. And, you know, and, and, and part of what I presented today about the importance of having, you know, Ms. Pepper's sculpture to stay in the West End on a permanent basis, you know, was really reinforced by Dwayne who, and, and, you know, and our team, you know, I think it further reinforces our commitment to help make that happen. And so, you know, again, perhaps Dwayne will, will speak his mind uh, to the extent that he, you know, public testimony will be allowed, but, you know, we'll sort of table that for a minute just to, and I just wanted to kind of set the table for that. But, you know, I would just say a couple things in our interactions, uh, you know, we talked about a couple things, you know, where could this theoretically go within the West End on a, on a permanent basis? And, you know, I had sort of thrown out, um, might it be able to go at Portal you know, Portal Park, which I know is a state owned, I think it's actually part of the Greenway. It's where the Bobby Orr statue had been temporarily relocated when the when the hub on causeway work was going on. And, you know, Dwayne was quick to let me know that that's probably not going to work just because the hardscape and landscape of that 
you know, it's just not conducive to, to such a sizable sculpture like like sudden like sudden presence. And so we just it was just a really good healthy conversation that we, that I, that it was I enjoyed. And one thing where we where we started to really zero in our focus on is is whether um, you know this uh, Miss Pepper sculpture could be permanently placed in you know what we call Merrimack Square, which is sort of the Hurley Lindemann um, site, the Hurley Building. It's state owned. As I think many of you know, and if not, I'll, I'll just do a quick background. Right now, the state owns that building. It's a Department of Mental Health, among others, who have you know space there. Um, you know, the idea is they're going to that site is intended to be redeveloped. And if I think the intent is to have sort of a public park or a public, you know, um, area there, and and this could be, you know, it's at the corner of Staniford and. Um, and was that, I guess that's Stanford and Merrimack streets, right? So, you know, that, that could be a nice, highly visible area where this, where this place could go. And so I, I know that Dwayne has sort of expressed uh, sort of that as a, as a logical low place, uh, location. You know, we at HYM um, reached out to DCAM again, who today they own that site. They're planning to put out an RFP and have that site be redeveloped. And we asked about the prospect of this sculpture living there permanently. You know, it was, uh, I think the, co the conversation with DCAM was, I would say, um, it was very positive. They were not in position to uh, firmly commit. You know, they have a lot going on with, um, you know, the, the RFP that they get ready to put out. They sort of expressed clearly that right now, that location that we were talking about, again, was is today has sort of a use is in terms of ambulatory use and, and, and stuff tied in with the Department of Mental Health who occupies space in, in the adjacent office building. But they were, I would say, very receptive to um, the idea of it happening. And so I think the combination of, and, and, and so they, they, they were clear though, as they, as they embark on this RFP, they didn't want to necessarily make it a requirement of the RFP for respondents who might, but they were very much receptive and wanting to work with us on an ongoing basis. And so, I reported that back in to Dwayne. I know that Dwayne had also drafted, and I don't know if it's been sent, I, you know, Dwayne can speak to that, but I know he drafted a letter to Commissioner Gladstone at DCAM, to the folks at DCAM to, to you know, reinforce the community, you know, his role in, in, in stating that, you know, it's really important that this piece of art stay within um, the West End if it can. And I think, you know, not only is Dwayne speaking just for himself, but I think he's speaking, you know, for the West End Museum, for the community, the West End community and the, the, the general community. So and we at HYM, we, we fully support that. And, um, you know, we're happy to do our part to continue to work with the, him, work with the museum, work with the community and work with DCAM to, to you know, find, you know, to, to, to figure out a solution here. And we think that's a logical one. So, um, I know that's maybe long-winded, but I did want to, I think it's important to give you guys that color, that background. There's a lot going on here. And I think that there's a lot of coordination to be done. The challenge though, is this, um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, we're probably 30 days out from when our site today becomes even more of a demolition zone. And, you know, it's really critical, frankly, that, you know, we relocate uh, that sculpture, I'm going to say, you know, now, right, I use that in quotes, but I would say really ideally over the next 30 days would be sort of our, our, our sort of timeline for that. And in my conversation with Dwayne, I, I, you know, I would say that he was supportive of, of that temporary relocation. And again, what we're talking about is a relocation of Suffolk Downs, which is a, another site that we own in East Boston. I can speak to that in a little more detail if you'd like, but you know, that's sort of uh, kind of what we thought about, but, you know, that um, support, I think, and that, and being okay with that is, is again, uh, contingent on us continuing to be committed to, um, you know, working with him, working with the community to find a permanent home in the, uh, in the West End, which again, we are for sure uh, there and we are for sure committed to doing that. So, um, so we've been, you know, in touch and, you know, I guess the last thing I would say, you know, before I pause here and, and maybe open it up to response and reaction is, you know, we, we want to make sure that this thing is relocated safely. It is relocated the right way. And we, um, have been in touch directly with Shaughnessy Crane. Um, you know, I personally have been in touch with a gentleman named Jerry Finnerty, Jerry, and I know, I think Jerry and Mike Shaughnessy himself, I think have been in touch you know, with members of this commission in the past, I think they've been in touch directly with the Office of Arts and Culture. Perhaps you, Karen, I, they, they talked about, 
you know, they, they, I think, as I understand it, they, they did the Bobby Orr relocation. They did, you know, the emancipation statue that was just relocated. They did the Christopher Columbus statue that I think was, you know, you know, needed to be taken out of, out of, you know, out of commission for a while. Um, so we feel confident that, you know, Jerry, the team at Shaughnessy, we have the right team that knows how to do this that knows how to appropriately work, you know, within the right, you know, in the appropriate manner to relocate this again, not only on a temporary basis, which we hope you get your assent for, but on a permanent basis as well. One interesting tidbit that I learned is that there is a, this guy, Jerry, who I've been in touch with at Shaughnessy Crane, one of his colleagues at Shaughnessy who's been there for a number of years actually was involved in one of the original you know, moves of, of uh, Miss Pepper's sudden presence sculpture. And so uh, it was pretty interesting and it reinforced, you know, our confidence in them to, you know, do this and, and to do this right. Now, to be clear, though, we haven't, you know, we've done nothing other than they, they've priced it. They've, they've they'll let us know what it would cost to move the stuff down. They'll help us to, you know, they, they've, they've talked us through the process and, you know, we're sort of leaning on them as the experts. We haven't done anything beyond that because, you know, we didn't want to get too far ahead of it, but, just given that time is of the essence, we we wanted to make sure that we had the right team in place to do this in the right manner. Uh, again, on both a temporary and, and sort of for a permanent uh, solution here. And um, again, with that, I'll pause. I, I'll say thank you guys for letting me have the floor here and, and to explain and hopefully um, you know this answers some of the questions that came up uh, with that you know in, in our last session. With that, I will again. Uh, I'll turn it back over, Chair Pasnick, to you. And you know, if you think it's okay to maybe have Dwayne speak or someone else speak, uh, you know, obviously your call. And I'm here to answer any questions and comments that might be out there. Thank you. Um, I I would like a little more clarity from you, maybe before we open that to Dwayne about the time frame and exactly what you're asking to do with the temporary work. We I think we've talked a little bit about it, but it might be good to say what length of time. Uh, you did mention how you're getting it there, where exactly it's going, those kinds of things. I, I think we were expecting to have a little more a specific plan for this side of the question, uh, as well as uh, some thought about when it returns back to central Boston. Yeah, um, I think, so I'll, I'll answer in two parts. I mean, with respect to, to moving it, um, again, we've worked with uh, the Shaughnessy team just to you know, help us understand what it would take and how they would do it. I mean, and again, I, I apologize. I probably am not best suited to explain that. And I, I don't have the Shaughnessy team here to do that. I just took great comfort in knowing that they've done this for some of the, you know, some recent uh, relocation and recent projects. I will tell you that, um, and again, we didn't want to get too far, too far ahead of things because we know we wanted to make sure we were doing things and sort of locked up with you first, but we have you know, our team has been, you know, who owns the Suffolk Down site. We've been over there. We've identified a uh, location over there where it'll be safe. It'll be, you know, no different than it, it exists today, which is sort of open and exposed to the elements. But, you know, we think, unless told otherwise, but, you know, in, in, in sort of kind of a way and safe and in an area that will keep it from harm. And, and, and so that's sort of the idea there. With respect to, you know, I, I guess the my relocation, question is, it's no, longer, it's no longer publicly accessible while it's there. Is that the, it's basically being storage, stored in Suffolk Downs? Is that the idea? Yeah, I think it, it's it, the way to look at it is that it, as a, it being stored there, correct? Okay. Being stored there, yes. And and for what length of time? Do you have a sense of that? Well, I, I, I think a lot of that is you know, we're committed to continuing to work again with Duane, with the West End Museum, with the community to work with DCAM. I mean, I think we're a little bit at the mercy of kind of their schedule, their redevelopment process, their RFP process and kind of working through a solution. So, you know, I'd hate to put a date on it because it's, it's kind of not totally in our control. But, you know, I, I think what we would want to commit to is perhaps regular check ins. And I don't know if that's once a year or a couple of times a year, I mean, you know, whatever, like if it's a couple of years where this thing is away and I don't know if it is or it isn't, but I would estimate that as we work through a, a community process, we make sure we, you know, document this thing and work through a, a solution where we can, we, we can move that, you know, but all the while we are working through that and we're committed to doing that, we would, we would be storing it safely at our other site. And how long does your construction process go? When, when do you open your building or, I mean, complete the site work? That is, is yeah, so the, the, the demolition, which is, again, already ongoing, will continue. It'll continue for the rest of 2021 into, you know, the second half of uh, 2022. And then what that does is it unlocks what we call the east parcel of our site. And um, 
in that east parcel of our site, again, which is where the Miss Pepper's, you know, seven presence is today, is home to a, a few, redo, you know, it's a few new projects that get built right after we finish that demolition. But that demolition continues. Yeah, I mean, not that, that construction continues into, I would say, into 2025 or 2026, I would say, at the earliest. So, you know, for the next five years, you know, we are construction, you know, demolishing the existing garage and then building new project components as part of this overall redevelopment. And um, again, and that's part of the reason why we don't anticipate, uh, you know, sudden presence living at the site, you know, in, a, in the final condition, part of the reason we want to, but again, we want to work to find a permanent home for it, again, with the help of others, Dwayne and others. Um. So I, I'd be happy to uh, open it up to Dwayne for a few minutes if you'd like to say some comments before we ask, before we see if there's other questions from commissioners. Is Dwayne there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay, yes, you're welcome to make some, do you, would you like to make any comments now? Uh, yes, I believe this sculpture has actually been moved before. It was located across the street um, at, at the same complex where the Government Center garage was. It was part of the uh, urban renewal project and the, the percentage to art that was, you know, came online back in the 1970s. I think that this is an important cultural asset to our neighborhood. Um, I think it has always been neglected like most, much public art in Boston. And I think it's a, a sculpture looking for a frame. And one location that we've identified, which I think would be great, is the corner of Staniford and Merrimack Street, which is currently a parking lot, but originally designed by Paul Rudolph, that building and that that plaza called Merrimack Plaza was actually meant to be open public space. And the Hurley building, as many know, is being redeveloped. And part of the redevelopment of the Hurley building is going to be uh, improvements to the Paul Rudolph Lindemann Center and the landscape surrounding it. Um, the conversation has been that Merrimack Plaza will be turned into a grassy open space park. And I believe that the Beverly Pepper sculpture would be a perfect, um, that would be a perfect setting and frame for that sculpture. Now, if you look at the Lindemann Center from above, you know, an aerial view, you'll see that it's uh, designed in a triangle. You'll also notice that the Brook Courthouse is designed in a triangle as well as the Bullfinch Triangle that was designed 200 years ago. And Beverly uh, Pepper sculpture is also a triangle. And I believe that this is really the perfect location for it. So um, the museum advocates for all our cultural and historical assets. And um, we absolutely wanna see this particular one stay in the West End. Okay, thanks for your comments. Um, I'll now open it up to other commissioners who might have questions or comments before we open it up to the public. I, I sort of understand that this is a, a two part sort of question, right? Part one is the <laughs> of peace and the temporary storage. And then the second part of this is where it, its permanent uh, location. Um, I would certainly agree that it needs to stay in the West End, um, but I have to say, I don't think enough information has been given to us about why it can't go back on the site or the plaza that's, that's being developed as part of the second or third phase of the government center garage. So I don't know if we, end up separating our discussion into the first phase, which is, and I understand the urgency of, of moving the piece given the construction um, schedule. And then do we have a, a 
discuss it at, at a later date uh, where the piece comes back. Um, and you know, what are, what are, what are all the options? Um, and then I think my third piece would be that I'm assuming that how the piece is gonna be moved, how it's gonna be stored, all that information would be given to the staff for them to review, um, I'm guessing. Um, Cause I think we would need a little bit more, John, than just Shaughnessy has done this in the past. I think is the piece, how many pieces is the piece? Is it all one piece? Is it two pieces? How they, you know, I think uh, we sort of helped got all that, those specs when the emancipation um, piece was moved. And so that's my other comment. That that's echoes some points that I've been thinking about too, which is that this is, you know, one of the most significant uh, sculptors from that era who also uh, was a woman at a time where women were, you know, often kept out of the practice of, um, you know, or not, not very few women achieved the, the recognition that um, Beverly Pepper did in the field of sculpture in the 60s and 70s in the late modern period. Uh, so it's a remarkable work in our collection for a number of reasons, um, her profile, as well as the fact that we have very few women in the collection from the 20th century in general. Um, and so I think there's a lot of pressure on this piece is that it really symbolizes something that we're trying to get, you know, more women represented in our collection uh, and removing one piece um, is to me deeply problematic. And I can understand the temporary request. I, I certainly um, sympathize with the need to have uh, room quickly for staging your project, um, but I'm very unclear about why you know, I know your landscape architects are super talented firm from New York. Um, and I don't know why they couldn't design an integrated place to put it back on the site. The idea of moving it to the Hurley site redevelopment, I was also on the advisory panel for that RFP process with DCAM. So I know the process well, it's, you know, it's far later than your project likely to be. And it's another developer who will be developing a different site. If we can't convince you to embrace the work that's already exists on your site, how are we expected to uh, convince a developer that hasn't even been chosen for the site yet um, to uh, stand up and house you know, what I think is a really remarkable work. So my question I think is similar to Michael's is why doesn't HYM celebrate the fact that they have one of the leading sculptors of the 20th century's work on their land and we work out an MOU where there's a long-term agreement we give you permission to temporarily remove it during your construction process and see a return to central Boston in the West End neighborhood uh, on the site where it stands today. Is that something we could do? Yeah. I, I think we could very quickly solve this uh, if you would agree to partner with us to, um, you know, use this, this, this could be a marketing tool for your, you know, mm -hmm. wonderful site. You want to sell, people are going to be living around an artwork by one of the premier sculptors of the 20th century. Yeah, and, and I, I appreciate those comments from both you, Chip has again, um, and Michael, Commissioner Canizzo. I, I think if I could, um, I would say, you know, for sure our, you know, top priority is to, you know, make sure you guys are okay with the temporary location for us, that is, that is, you know, uh, you know, critical importance to us again, um, just because, you know, we're right on the doorstep of, of continuing, you know, this, this demolition and deconstruction, I would say we are happy in a, I would say if you could, you know, grant us that assent, that would be, we'd be very grateful. And you know, again, we're committed to um, helping find a home for this in the West end. Could it be that it lives on our site? I mean, I would say, I think the short answer to that question is yes. I think that's sure. I, I, admittedly, though, I'm, I, I, it's not just me who can make that decision. I would need to pull in some of my colleagues, some of the other folks with whom I work to be a part of that conversation. So my sort of recommendation would be if you guys could you know, help us and, again, grant that assent for that temporary location, again, subject to us providing you with uh, you know, all the documentation from Shaughnessy and the specs and how it all works for you know, doing it safely, you know, we would be happy to engage and, you know, if we come back again and, and present this in more detail in, in terms of a more permanent solution. We can do, you know, more work, you know, more roll up the sleeves work sessions. The short answer is though, you know, as to why we're a little bit reluctant is because our redevelopment plan 
you know, it does create a, a sort of public plaza, almost, almost a connect, connection of Canal Street. Um, and, you know, but there's sort of that connection is, you know, it's sort of a, it's almost like picture, almost like a street, but it's on either side of that street, there are buildings that will, will be built there. And the, the current master plan calls for, you know, three buildings that are there. Um, and, you know, and again, I think I presented this in the last, I'm happy to walk through it again, but, you know, that public plaza that is there, we sort of, it's, it, you know, I just don't, I think our feeling is that the size and the scale of this sculpture wouldn't allow for, it would just be a little bit obtrusive within that public plaza that we are creating, just given the size and scale of it. I mean, remember, because we have part of that area, there's a lot of foot traffic through there, which is a good thing, which could mean that this piece of art could be seen, no doubt, but also too, there's a active MBTA headhouse, you know, with access and egress implications for the MBTA, which we, you know, heavily negotiated with them. They need to make sure that they can get, you know, um, uh, first responder vehicles there if they need to get into that, you know, so there's just other implications here as to why it's hard to, commit right now, not only just from how, you know, our just general plan for the site, but also to this sort of external factors here at play. So what am I saying here? You know, we de very much need your help to, to temporarily relocate this. We're, we're for sure committed to helping find a location. I am not, you know, going to close the door, uh, you know, on it living at our site. I, I'd love to roll up the sleeves and work with you guys on that, work with our landscape. We'd love for you guys to, to play a role in that. That would be that would be great. We'd, we'd love to do that. But I also, I don't want to, I want to be a truth teller here. And I want to say that, you know, part, I just want to explain some of the rationale as to why I think our team has been reluctant to date. So I hope you can sort of appreciate that perspective and don't mind me sharing that in response to your question. But, um, you know, I think the door is open here for us to continue to work together and we look forward to that. I think um, if we can focus on the relocation question that's, that's time sensitive for right now, I think the things that we're missing, and I, I'm open to this being clarified at a staff level, but um, we don't, we need more information as was mentioned about like how this is actually being transported and stored and all of that. And I think for us, I, I would float the idea of having um, something on paper about when we revisit the location and the process for revisiting the relocation of the piece, just so that we have that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's, I think it's really easy for this to get lost in development timelines and everything. And we don't want to put that on the back burner. Um, mm -hmm. so I would just say that about the first decision. I think in order to figure out the second piece, we do need a, a step of due diligence where if we can have a meeting with, you know, whether it's Chair Pasnick and staff and, um, you know, the design team or the landscape team just to like do one final due diligence on on the design that, that you're saying doesn't have space for the sculpture. Because I remember going in a design review article 80 meeting ages ago and saying this needs to be relocated on the site and even at that point the answer was the design is already too far along to incorporate it and so i i think we need to do one one um, last look at that and plan that out and if that's the case then we need a public process and some steps to figure out where this actually goes and there's even a third part to this i would just say for the commission i think clarifying the ownership and whether we want to have something that clearly says this is a part of the city's collection so that we're not kind of bouncing around some of these ownership questions going forward. That would be kind of a third piece that we could address in the future. Thank you. And I'll um, also mention that uh, we have a hand raised here. Um, Mark. Dwayne, Dwayne's um, hand. So Dwayne, did you want to make a comment? Uh, yes, for Mark Pasnick. Um, just to be clear about the Hurley redevelopment, that is the uh, upgrades to the Lindemann are almost comparable to mitigation. Uh, they're, they're two separate projects. Uh, the, the Lindemann is not being redeveloped. The Hurley is, but as an amenity or as a part of the Hurley building being redeveloped, the commissioner has asked and created an opportunity for upgrades to the Lindemann Center, the park at Merrimack Plaza included. So I think that, you know, we should be clear on that. Sure, I was, I was part of the advisory committee that encouraged that with many of your neighbors uh, that encouraged the developers to that, that to be a component of the project. But all I'm saying is that I, I do know that's a long way off and probably as hard to coax uh, a developer to do what you want as uh, it will be 
for HYM. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a great idea. I'm, you know, a big fan of that building and site and it needs a lot of work. Um, but I, I, I do worry that if we give permission that this goes somewhere and then we don't really have a place for it to come back to, it may be gone for a long time. And so to, to my thinking, maybe Cara, as a friendly amendment to your position would be to say, we offer um, the developer the ability to move it with the promise that it's coming back to its site or that they find another site with us uh, to put it to, but that there's the returning it to the existing site would be the default and that we're open to rolling up our sleeves with you if you find a better option or we can work with the community to find a better option. But I don't want us to be out there where we send this somewhere else and then we don't have any means to really bring it back to the city. That would be my, my concern. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good concern and we don't want that either to be clear. I mean, I know I'm obviously advocating to have it relocated and for it to not necessarily live at our site in a permanent condition, but you know, we want to be part of a solution here and, and I'm, I'm we're for that. I mean, you know, I think Kara's suggestion of, you know, um, Sort of moving it and us getting you more info on that and then sort of papering kind of when we come back and make sure that we don't lo collectively lose sight of this is a good one and you know we're committed to do our part to do that and um you know and so and and, and by the way you know happy uh, car to your point about you know where we are in the article 80 process where we were back then i mean i think for sure the door is not shut for an opportunity for us to revisit that idea. Can we actually make that work? Does it fit within kind of what we have in mind, but also to present an opportunity to accentuate this piece of art and, you know, highlight it, you know, as Chair Passage said, you know, perhaps it is a, a marketing tool or something that draws attention. I mean, who knows, right? All these things I think are on the table and we'd like to do that with you and appreciate you guys being, you know, at least expressing that you're open to the idea of kind of bifurcating these ideas and understanding our urgency to, temporarily come up with a solution for now. Cara, what do you think? Do we need to, or you, you find, to, are others fine to leave it open-ended? I, I sort of worry about it being too open-ended. I, I think we should say we're, we're willing to let it be moved with the guarantee that it's coming back to this site unless another site is able to be found. And that we would work on an MOU that allows you to, to uh, you know, continue to work with Dwayne. And if you find another site that we would then later approve, that that would be great. But we run under the assumption that this artwork belongs where it is right now. It's it's being moved temporarily so that you have the staging space. We can do that very quickly, um, as it provided that you you know give us the right information to the the staff. I think the staff could. Uh, discuss at that level and within your 30 days it could pro probably happen but uh, I don't I'm personally uncomfortable with leaving this open-ended what its future is uh, without a guarantee that you're you're saying it's coming back to this site or that you're you know finding a new site with us um, that that we would later approve as a as a kind of second move in a way it's like you're asking to just put it somewhere else and bring it back and then move it although you may not you know do those multiple steps. That, that to me would be a way where we can now have a longer discussion about this, but also be proactive and fast to your current needs uh, without really, you know, I'm just worried about banishing this sculpture to somewhere else. And it's such an important part of our collection an important part of this, the life of the city. And I, I, I hope you would embrace it as a organization uh, in your own place. I, I yeah, have my personal opinion that even though uh, the BPDA has approved uh, a, a couple of the buildings that are under construction and, and will be going under construction, um, and we have approved the sort of overall framework of what's going on, what, what John was talking about on the um, side of where the uh, T stop is, but in no way have we ever have we signed off on final drawings for any of those buildings on that side of of the street or the final uh, designs for the plaza. Um, so I would say that from the BPTA that there certainly is time uh, for us to discuss um, the final design and configuration of the plaza and including um, the location, possible location, relocation of, uh, of the piece. So um, I, I think mm -hmm. from my perspective, there's still 
a lot of opportunity and, and we haven't signed off on anything on that side of uh, Congress, so. Yep, I think that's right. And that's what I was, you said it better than I did, Michael. Uh, you know, we do have like a master plan article 80 process that's been completed for the projects that are under construction. We have gone through a, a comprehensive article 80 process for those project components, but on these individual buildings that are yet to be developed, those need to go through that same design review process, that same call it large project review, article eight review on a building by building basis. And so again, so that's what I was trying to say to, to Kyra in that there is gonna be more opportunity to review that, to look at that, to understand, gee, do we really have an opportunity here? Perhaps we overlooked it in the midst of our sort of looking at the whole picture and just assuming we couldn't fit it. So I, I, you know, I, I think that you're absolutely right. And we're, we look forward to that conversation and, 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 and Chair Pazic, to your point, you know, again, we're happy to, you know, um, to have that sort of contingency plan in place where like, yes, if we relocate it, we have to obviously revisit this. The default is X and we're gonna collectively work together and we will as HYM be committed to working to find a solution with everyone. And, you know, um, that's as clearly as I can say it and we look forward to those next steps. But I just wanna add, I think you're hearing it's, it's just, maybe I'm speaking for the commission that it's a strong preference that the piece come back to your site it, it's in some location, whether it's where it is today or somewhere else um, nearby in the open space that is to be developed. So I would say that that's, that as you guys move forward with your other phases, you should keep that in mind. And when we work with the landscape architects that they need to keep that in mind that this the preference of this commission that the piece goes back mm -hmm. on your site. Yeah, absolutely. Understood. And thank you for saying it. I think we could make a motion that says exactly that, that um, takes away the second half of the question, which is where it could go elsewhere in the future. It just says we authorize you to move this temporarily for the time of your construction uh, and bring it back to this site. And then that enables us to, you could continue to try to persuade us that it should go elsewhere because there's no reason, but I don't feel any, um, I, I think we need to have it come back to this site as part of our discussion today. Otherwise, I would not feel comfortable voting in favor of having it temporarily removed. Um, I, I should open it up to, I've been speaking a lot to Michael and I, uh, are there other commissioners who have some thoughts that they wanna add in before we open to the public? I think one concern I have is um, I, I've actually visited the sculpture not so long ago and I definitely need some conservation. It, I feel it needs a cleaning. So I think that could be something that could happen when in the, in the, in the term to when it's moved. And I, I mean, a major concern is the ownership question. Who, who actually does own the sculpture? Do we own the sculpture? Yeah. I mean, our position, again, this is, that's the, one of the rubs here is like our position is that we own it, that when the whole, you know, garage was conveyed from pu private uh, public ownership to private ownership. With that came um, this sculpture, and so you know that that is an interesting question, you know, Commissioner Alvarez. And you know, and, and we've researched long and hard to see if there was sort of that piece of paper that proved that, but it it, it it's a, it's remained a little bit unclear. Uh, we do think that it is sort of our ownership, but you know, at the end of the day, we again, and hopefully this reinforces how we feel. If we'd love to work with you guys. And if that meant transfer and have it become part of your collection, we'd be happy to go through that process. And in the meantime, we're happy to work through solutions and figure out what happens here to it, not only on a temporary basis, a permanent basis, and from a conservation perspective. I mean, these are things we're all, you know, we're committed to be a part of. I wish I had a better answer for you, but that's that's kind of a little bit of the, uh, the challenge here um, with it. So, um, but it's a good question. And, and I don't know if we will turn up the, the paperwork or document that says it one way or the other, but you know, I think we can make um, you know, progress here together to, to, to figure out a solution where it does become part of your guys' collection agency formally, if that's what you want. So um, understand and um, happy to be a part of it. Uh, other commissioners before we open it up to the public? Okay, uh, are there any public comments, any individuals from the public who'd like to make a comment? I think uh, Dwayne again is the only person I see with a hand up. If anyone else would like to speak, please let us know. Uh, 
Yes, um, Mark, I'd just like to go back to that um, comment you made about the Hurley Lindemann, that one of the conversations that's recently been had with the uh, elected officials and Commissioner Gladstone is that the, re that the renovations to the Lindemann Center actually be done up front as opposed to after the redevelopment of the Hurley much like Lovejoy Wharf was done before that development was actually completed so that the public benefits are realized up front. So if this location were to be considered, um, that, could, that could be uh, expedited. Meaning that the plaza might happen earlier than the building complex. Yes. Okay, interesting, I didn't know that. Um, but again, I think from my perspective, it's a little bit hard to imagine that I'd feel comfortable saying, send this somewhere else, have no idea where it's going to come back to, um, and the chance that it gets lost. I think for, I don't think I could get to a vote tonight on that, but I could get to a vote tonight knowing that it's coming back, or at least that our position is that it has to come back to its current site. And we can continue to discuss whether that's what really happens. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't see... I don't think it would be a fair vote to not know where this is going long term. Can I um, totally can I, can I uh, put in here that I'd like to pull up a document where as we make a motion on this, because it's a little complex, I want to make sure we get the language right. So that as we have in the past, sometimes we can sort of do some live recording. I think Christina and Sarah can capture um, capture the, the words in the motion and we can confirm that it's accurate. And I think we... Um... We did not have any other members of the public who wanted to comment, correct? So we can just move into, we'll move into our final phase, which is um, commissioner deliberations. I think this motion could be pretty simple, actually, if it's that we're approving the temporary relocation of sudden presence pending staff review of the relocation details on the condition that the artwork returned to its original site. I don't think we need to add anything else to it because anything other than that would require coming back to the BAC anyway. Yeah, I agree. So I think it's, I think that's pretty clean. I thought that was perfectly what I would say too. <laughs> Second that I'm I'm well. So can you just read that off again, Karen? Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know if. Well, what we have down here says authorize the HYM investment group to move sudden presence by Beverly Pepper temporarily for the time of the construction and bring it back to the site. Yeah, I think the only thing that's missing there is that we, we do want staff review of some of the details of mm -hmm. the relocation. Mm -hmm. Moving in location and securing them. Do we want to mention where the temporary location site will be? Yes, I think it's at their facility at Suffolk Down. Is that what you're saying, John? Yes, correct. Uh, but those details should be maybe re included, reviewed by I'm all those included. details should be re reviewed by the staff, I would say. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and return back to the site. Um, do we want to specify something relative to construction? Um, within a year of completion of construction. Within six months. And then I agree with you, Kara, we could, we could cover the op the topics of ownership. And if, um, you know, John, you share with us that there's no way it will fit on the site um, when we can continue to work together to find a different site. But I, I think all of us would prefer that to be an option that we don't need to pursue. Um, I think we would all prefer to see it come back to its original home. Okay. Yeah. John, does that does that logic make sense to you? Since anything anything else? Okay, I'm sorry, I wasn't sure. Back to the BAC sure. anyway. Sure, I apologize. I didn't know if those were being directed at me. I was sort of being quiet because I didn't know if that was 
staff and commission talking. I, I apologize. Uh, yes, that sounds consistent with what we've talked about here. I think that's uh, what we'd like to do. So I think we should record that and plan for it that way. And um, again, and that's, that sounds good from us, from, from our perspective. And I, I would volunteer to be on a subcommittee to work with your landscape architects to discuss where it could go on the site. Um, I'd be happy to yeah. use my the, professional expertise in, uh, in, in public space planning, so. Very good. Happy to have you. And, you know, they're a good team. We, we, to your point, we do love working with them. So, you know, that makes sense and happy to help facilitate that, Mark. Um, Mark. Do we want to add anything about, as uh, Camille said, about um, any kind of um, cleaning or conservation work? I could see that becoming part of the next phase question of its return. I'm, I'm at the point of thinking about ownership. I mean, I think HYM, John Hurley just said that if there is a question of ownership, if they would be willing to give it to the city of Boston, I think that should be, a, well, probably researched and thought out, thought of as well. I agree all these things should happen. I'm wondering whether they need to happen in this in this motion or if they're part of our next set of conversation. With oh, absolutely, I would imagine a gift like that, HYM has to really consider. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But we, you know, at the same time, we want to do what's best and we, we want to do our part. So my recommendation, if that's appropriate here, would be to, you know, to your point, Chair Pazic, is to, is to table it, but we're happy to further research ownership. We're happy to entertain the idea of you know, relinquishing ownership, if that's what's determined and have it become part of the city's collection. I mean, that's for sure all on the table and, you know, something that we would consider, uh, you know, and, and happy to, you know, engage in that conversation at, at our next session, whenever that is, if, if everyone's okay with that. Would it, would it satisfy, sorry, sorry, Michael, would it satisfy the commission to make some reference to future conversations around conservation and donation, just to indicate that they will be planned for, but won't be part of this, if, if that's a concern. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, conservation and ownership questions will be addressed. You read, you read my mind precisely. I just have just one consideration. I was like, would we want to include, and or maybe we don't, but just thinking about would it be important to include a conservation consultation before the pieces actually touch? I would just be a little concerned if you know, we've not gone th through that process and uh, the moving company is kind of showing up on, you know, day one to move the piece and, and it then actually it turns um, out to be not able to be moved. Um, You're talking about an assessment, basically. An assessment, a consultation, you know, like before the piece is even touched. Yeah, that makes sense. And they, they could at least tell us what, what conservation is necessary long haul before we have a discussion about that. So we'd be asking HYM we... to do that? I would, and yeah. And maybe that's part Sorry. of staff conversation, but as long as that, you know, it's kind of agreed upon that that is part of the staff conversation that happens. Um, I think it would be good to see that, that a staff, a staff all these tasks after our vote tonight should be staff tasks, I think, so that we don't have to come back to another vote. Although we're, our next meeting's only in two weeks, so it's not that long. It's still within your 30 day window, John. Ah, absolutely. And you know, to that point around conservator coming out and this and that, I mean, if that's something you decide you'd like to ask us to do that, you know, I'm sure we'd be open to that and that's fine. I guess my ask back would be, you know, and I'm just speaking candidly, I don't know who the right person to call, who the right group is to call, so we would look to our arts and culture staff to help us with that. So if not too much in ask, that would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, definitely they can advise you on that. Great, thank you. Yes, yeah, so wasn't there a condition report done of emancipation group before it was moved? So I'm assuming, Brian, you want something like that. No. Okay, so should we, are we, do, oh, sorry, do, are we supposed to add one more sentence here about future conversations? Are we missing that or did you have that in? Yeah, I was going to say that we, maybe we should list what future items we want to discuss the ownership, 
things like um, ownership and and relocation strategy, I guess. Oh, yeah. That leaves it open-ended enough, whether we're just strategizing where on the site it goes or if you need <laughs> if you need to find another site with the community. Right. Should we include Conservation in that as well. Yes. If yes, during yes. the assessment. Mm This seems pretty good. Um, do you want to just read it out loud for us, Karen? Sure. Um, so the current motion draft is uh, to authorize HYM Investment Group to temporarily, temporarily move sudden presence by Beverly Pepper, pending staff review of the details, including a con conservation assessment obtained by HYM Investments prior to removal to HYM's facility at Suffolk Downs, for the time of the construction and return to the site within a year of completion of construction. Future items for consideration include a potential conservation and or repair of sudden presence, ownership of the artwork, potential for donation to the city, and a relocation strategy for a permanent site for the artwork. Um, I suggest saying long-term site for the artwork. We've been moving away from uh, the language of permanent. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that I think we could maybe amend here is the details, just being a little bit more specific about what that means, pending staff review of the plan of action, or I'm not sure exactly what, the, what we're meaning by details. The location details? Yeah, maybe that's it, yeah. Yes. Relocation and storage, let's say not removal. Okay. Any other last comments before somebody claims this as their motion? <laughs> Tara, I think you uh, had the biggest hand in this, so maybe it's your motion. No way. My motion was one sentence. <laughs> I will say, I'm, is there any concern about the fact that? In the first sentence, we say that it needs to be returned to the site and then future items for consideration ask for a re relocation strategy long term. Those seem slightly contradictory. They are potentially and I think maybe we should, we could say something about, um, I mean, we are leaving it open to them to say that they'd like to convince us to put it somewhere else. But um, I don't know, do we want to add some wording in here that we think it should go back to its? I would just remove that last piece about relocation strategy. Okay. Okay. Well, we want, do we want to add or any other items that may come up because we, you know, there may be something that we're not necessarily seeing at this moment that I don't know we that may we need to discuss. That this motion needs to include everything either. It's sort of getting us to a certain stage. Maybe like I think because yeah. it says it includes, yeah. So I think, but are not limited to, yeah. Right. That's it. That does it. Okay. Including, but not oh. limited. Right. Perfect. All right. So that, if I could, and not to pile on here, but, it, you know, again, we would like to work with you guys to, you know, may, who knows, keep it at the site, but we, we do want the opportunity to try to convince you to, if we are making 
you know, inroads and in finding a new location in the West End. So, you know, I'd, I'd hate for that language to disappear and then, you know, have someone use it as a gotcha moment, not saying anyone would, but I don't know. Do you think that, but not limited to language sort of creates that opportunity for us to come back, you know, again, just to have it as the opportunity, not saying that we're going to, you know, that, you know, that we're going to do that, but we'd like to have the, the open-endedness if, if you think that's appropriate. I think what you're hearing from us is that we, we would need to be convinced that it should go elsewhere. And you could convince us of that. It's not, you know, we can always change. We can have a new motion in the future that contradicts this motion. But at the moment, none of us feel confident, or at least I shouldn't say none of us, but many of us don't feel confident that it should go somewhere else in an open-ended way. And that we think that this, okay. is, this is what we're offering as a way for you to answer your immediate need for construction removal, but also not, you know, forcing us to make a decision that we don't agree with. Um, and perhaps okay. in the future you could make us agree with that it shouldn't go back to its original site. Um, this doesn't preclude that. It doesn't mean that that could never be discussed again. Um, but it, yeah, but that I would do, be part I, of the new motion. I do hope that you, I know you can make the decision, but I do hope that you're able to communicate to others that we feel strongly that it should go back. I mean, I've heard at least four of us say that. Uh, that's mm -hmm. almost half the commission say that we think it should go back to its original site. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that we want to part of the team, that. but yes. Yeah, understood. And I think that's fine. Understood. That's helpful. Thank you for clarifying. That works. Okay, so it seems like we have a good motion here. Who wants to claim it? Uh, sure, I'll claim it. Okay, thank you, Michael, for making that very thoughtful motion. <laughs> uh, can we have a second to it as well? I'll second. Thank you, Cara. Uh, and so I should. Um, Read off both. So Lisa. Sorry, yes. Uh, John? Yes. Brian? Yes. Camilo? Yes. Cara? Yes. Michael? Yes. Robert? Yes. Uh, and did I miss anybody besides myself? I'm a yes as well. I got everybody. Uh, so the motion passes. Um, thank you, John. And we look forward to continuing to work with you on a number of topics. Um, but I think that this, you can now work with staff um, to, to make a plan to, uh, and finalize a plan for its temporary move to, um, uh, to the site, to East Boston. Great. Terrific. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for all your time and your patience. Really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. I believe that's our last item for business, except for the adjournment. Is that correct? Yes. So yes. Uh, now we need a move that we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> move that we adjourn. Do we have I a second, second that? Okay, Camilo has seconded that. All in favor, just say aye at once. Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Hearing none. Uh, we are adjourned. So thank you, everybody, for your uh, good work today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Good night. Thank yeah, you. Thanks very much. Bye, all. Bye bye.